Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a truckload of things that you guys would want to take a look at. First off, we're going to start by talking about the folks at Rococo. So Rococo now has a brand new Blender plugin. So if in case you own a Rococo suit or you own a smart glove, you can now use the Blender plugin that you can get for free right here, which I'm going to put a link in the description. You can get this and you can use it with your Rococo suit and you can now simply stream from your suit over to Blender totally for free. So with this said, let's go over and talk about the Code Quality Day. So Code Quality Day is something that the folks at Blender Foundation have actually started. This started out in February 2020 and it is actually the first Friday of every month where they come together, you know, to take a look at the codes and see how to actually make it look better. So the idea for this is that the team is working to see how to make Blender code easier to understand. And there are a couple of things, a couple of examples that they've worked on, and you can take a look at the clingy tidy. There's, you know, a lot of things, quality of life, and also cleanup. Now, the beautiful thing about this news is that right now you can be involved. So there's an open letter that is right here. So in case you want to read this one, you can simply take a look at the link in the description and see how you can help participate and also work with the folks at Blender Foundation. So for feedbacks on what to do, code review and anything else, you will be able to get updates by simply checking out the hashtag Blender coders in the Blender chat. So I'm also going to put a link to this one in the description just in case. So with this said, let's take a look at some pretty, pretty cool updates and new features now in Blender 2.92. And you know, the whole thing here is uh, Blender 2.92 is just about a week old or so. And the, the, there's just a lot of updates. There's a lot of updates already in this amazing app. So let's take a look at this. First off, we're going to talk about the UI. So with Blender 2.82 open, the alpha, there are certain things with the UI. So first things, if you simply select an object right now, let's start with the outliner. If you click down here, there is a show mode column. Now this is it's not something new, but it is now here because if you press your tab key, you can see we have this going. If you click now, you can turn this off. You can turn it back on. Lovely. Now, another pretty cool thing with the outliner is now you can hop through properties without even going to them. What do I mean? If you click on your camera, by default, if you want to make changes to your camera, you have to go to the camera icon or you hold down control and you know, you click all the way up and down. Now those are the things of the past because now you can click on the icon and once you do that, it takes you over to the properties. The same thing happens for the light. So if I select the light right now and I click on this button, you know, we can jump right there. If I also select the cube and click here, it takes me over to the vertex property. And this also works for your deformers. So for example, let's say we want to play with deformers. What deformer are we looking at? Maybe the subdivision. All right, we can do that. If I click down here and click on the deformer, let's skip over to this part and click on the deformer. You see, it takes us directly to where that deformer thing is. And if I click on the properties that has to do with the shading, it takes us to the material as well. So this is something very, very interesting. Now, while we're still talking about the UI, there is also another beautiful update that deals with the playback controls. So if I click on the playback control right here or click on this button, you would notice we have the sync. Of course, the sync has, you know, it's probably there for a while now, but then once you click down here, we now have the play every frame. We have the frame drop in and also sync to audio. So the sync to audio is considered as an AV sync. The frame drop in is there and the play every frame is considered as the no syncing. So just in case you're into animation or maybe you're into simulation right now, you can use this play every frame to see how your simulation goes. Or maybe you can do your frame dropping just in case the animation isn't playing as good as you want. Now there is an update to a pretty cool modifier. Now this update to this modifier is not necessarily to a modifier modifier, but it's to an object that modifies other objects that has a modifier. Let me explain. So if you simply hold down shift and tap A on your keyboard, there is a lattice deformer. So let's simply scale that lattice deformer all the way here, or should I just simply call it lattice? Now the beautiful thing with this update is you can now apply modifiers to the lattice. Contrary to what we had before, where you just simply select any of the deformers and then you cannot apply them. 
right now you can apply them so if you're coming from 3d studio max lattice deformer right here in blender is considered as ffd and if you're coming from maya lattice deformer is also considered as lattice deformer so how does this actually work so if you simply select an object like this which is the lattice deformer you can go over to the properties so let's do that right here click down here you can go to the properties and maybe we can set these about six by let's do that by six and also by six so once you have this going you can now go over to the deformers or to the modifier and i'm going to select bend now once you have this bend right now you can now click on this drop down button and apply it but the question is what if you want to use this how do you use it because probably a lot of you guys may not even know how to use this how you can use this is simple select the object itself which you want this lattice deformer to deform or which you want this lattice to deform all right select the object itself and then you can apply lattice to it now once you select this lattice depending on how the lattice itself has been deformed that is the way the object will be deformed so once you have that lattice deformer applied or once you have the lattice modifier applied to the mesh you can now click down here and select that lattice automatically your mesh conforms to how the lattice is now one thing to also keep in mind is lattice by default is a linear modifier so what that means is once you simply move around or you move away from it okay you get to notice that there is a you know a change there is a change so how do you bake this in how we can bake this is easy select the lattice go over to the modifier and simply apply that and now if we go back let's simply go back and apply and click down here and apply this we have our objects going so at this point you can now simply select the lattice and get rid of it just in case you're trying to just achieve a shape like that so it's very interesting to see that the lattice modifier or the lattice object itself now accepts modifiers that can be baked into them and this is really really lovely there's also a very cool update to the fluid an apic fluid method has now been implemented obviously this looks way better and you know it cuts out several of the lapses that we get to experience with the flip fluid and hopefully we will take a look at this and see how it works and probably make a well detailed video about that one now with this said let's dive back into blender and see some other updates now there is a, a very lovely update that deals with the grease pencil and i think it's best to actually talk about that first off let's get rid of this cube and then let's talk about the grease pencil so go over to add go over to grease pencil and let's add a blank one it has a couple of updates now one of the updates is the fact that you can now rotate textures and you can easily rotate this thing so if you're working with the texture you're working with you know um, your grease pencil you can now easily rotate the textures now the second update is that right now if you go over to your draw and let's say we draw something like so let me just simply do some scribbles like this let's do that right here now if you've drawn something like this by default once you click on the cutter and you go in to cut things let's cut this part and cut this other part you will notice let's take a look you would notice that it cuts it and you know the edge is rounded so we can also do the same thing here and you can see the edge is rounded but now there is a flat cap feature so if i cut this now you notice it has a much more straight looking cap and we can do the same thing here let's go all the way out and do that and you can see it has a flat cap right there and if i also come right close and do the same thing so in case you're trying to you know get some very nice looking stuff and you want them to be flat you can now use this feature to do those things all right so this is for the grease pencil it's very interesting to see grease pencil keeps updating over and over and over the last time we talked about grease pencil we talked about a brand new um add-on that has been made and this was made specifically for grease pencil from the folks at blender where you can type in the word grease within the add-on and you have a grease pencil add-on that you can use so we talked about the fact that these add-on can help you straighten certain things so in case you didn't see that video link is going to be in the description so with this out of the way let's go out and talk about something from our very own pablo so now we are in the terrain of sculpting and pablo seems to have listened to us i appreciate that a lot and he has actually done something that we've kind of complained about and that is the fact that once you select your object and you jump over to your sculpting section now and scroll all the way down 
Previously, all of these were individual, so we complained about that, and it's cool to see that the box trim and the lasso trim, they exist as one piece. And then if you also click down here, the box and the lasso exist as one piece, and we also have all of these ones now existing as one piece. I love this. Now, something else that Pablo has added is the fact that there is an auto masking pie menu. So if you hold down Alt on your keyboard and tap A, there is an auto masking pie menu. So you can now use the auto masking pie menu to auto mask your, you know, topology, your faces, your face set, your face set boundary, and also your mesh boundary. So contrary to doing all of that from the brush section, you can now hold down Alt and tap A on your keyboard and do this one. So this makes more sense and I love it. Now, while we are talking about Pablo, Pablo has also made an implementation for the Dean Topo detail size edit. So at this point, you can now easily edit your Dean Topo, more like what you could do with the remesh. Although this doesn't seem to be something that is implemented at the point of recording, probably this might be implemented sometime later in the future. So at this point, you can now play with your Dean Topo, you can remesh certain parts and you can work with it. And it's very, very nice to see that this is also a nice little cool feature that is now here. And speaking about nice little cool features, there is this other cool one with the trim brush. So if you select the trim brush and go over to lasso, now in Blender, the last time we talked about the lasso, this is what we had. That once you select any part and you do something like so, that it cuts through to the other parts, okay? Now, it doesn't matter whether it's dealing with the normals or not. What happens is it just simply cuts through to the other parts. So Pablo has added a use cursor for depth effect. Now, this seems to be one simple thing, but it's not. So what happens here is if I click on the use cursor for depth, it simply uses the cursor to calculate the depth of what it's going to cut through so right now you can see how much it cuts so if i go in and do something like so it uses the cursor to calculate you know how much it's going to cut now this one has several modes the mode which we are using right now is the difference mode so if i click down here and switch to union it's going to unify whatever thing i'm creating automatically what this means is it's creating new geometry for us so you can see that right here and if we even switch this to the box stream you even get a, a bigger or a much more clearer glimpse so let's also undo that and switch these to union and make sure we have this turned on and let's do that you can see it looks like so if we do this you can see it looks like so now if you're into creating things like this this might actually be very useful and there is also the last one called join which can also join the meshes as you cut them through so it looks quite similar to that of you know the union but i don't really think it is so this is also something very very useful all right so you can see this looks pretty nice so it's very nice to see that pablo is working tirelessly to get us these cool features and these cool tools so with that said let's take a look at one last feature so we are selecting this and we would you know we're just going to scale this all the way down and the reason why we're scaling this down let's uh change this all the way to five and let's apply that all right so the reason why we're doing this is if we go over to the sculpting section there is an update and that update deals with the grab now let me explain this grab thing to you guys increase your grab brush like so and go over to your tool section and scroll all the way down and you choose to move this you notice it just simply moves it like so now you may not see the result of this because you know we're very close but if i put this within this section and do that you can see it moves every part now this is actually something that might be referred to as back face auto masking in zbrush but here in blender pablo has added the grab silhouette so you can now grab just the silhouette of a particular section and right now you can use that to only manipulate one part of the mesh so this is way better than what we had before so if you just want to manipulate one part of the mesh you can do that and you can see it bounces back and forth back and forth so this one looks better than what we had before which was you know cutting through the entire mesh and you can see that feature and before you select this one more time and do this you can see it doesn't cut through it only cuts through the silhouette so this is a very nice and nifty cool feature to have so this is more like what we have as updates for this week there are also some pretty cool updates like the art studio light which actually i think it makes a lot of sense to show you guys so let's clean this one up 
and let's take that out press delete to get rid of that shift on a let's throw in susan the monkey and let's subdivide her by this so this one is a feature that most of you guys may skip you probably have seen heard about it but don't know where it is so i'll show you where you can find it so if we simply select the paint and come down here and switch this to vectors and then change the color and raise the color all the way up switch this to you know red increase the brush size and start painting so the idea here is pablo has added a brand new studio light so what is this studio light and how can you find it and how can you make use of it so most of the times so after painting and doing stuff like this you either get lost in the mesh or you don't really have enough lighting to illuminate some hidden parts so right now if you click down here and click on this button there is now a brand new studio light that has been added so you can see that here and just in case you're wondering no it always existed in blender no it doesn't because if you take a look at blender 2.90 and you click down here you click here you don't see that all right so you cannot see that here it's only here so it's a very cool nice light preset studio light presets for anyone who would love to work with these things so these are some of the cool updates there's also a very nice update to cycles and going over to more features there are cool features coming to the compositor that deals with compatibility motion tracking and also the sequencer so this is definitely all about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section if you want to grab a fresh copy of blender 2.92 so you can test this update or test these features link is going to be in the description where you can grab that if you would like to join the code quality day link is also going to be in the description where you can take a look at that and for those who might simply have a rococo suit and you're trying to run through you know want to work with blender and you want to stream directly from rococo over to blender link to this beautiful add-on and also link to some amazing cool add-ons that would save your life is also going to be down in the description so do well to take a look at those tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace